They say that fights aren't one in the ring, they're one in the gym. The gym is where you develop. It's where you build character, integrity, confidence. This particular gym helped keep troubled kids off the streets. It was their second home. Now, it's gone. We're always looking for a way to give back to our community. So a group of us got together to fight each other, to raise money for a new gym. But we're not boxers. We're cooking your food, serving your drinks, cutting your hair, making your coffee. At first, the coaches didn't think much of us. They thought we were soft, that we couldn't handle the training. It's been tough. We've been pushed to our breaking point. Not the bell! This ain't fucking fitness, bro! When I say double time, I mean double time! Let's go! Double A few have quit. Some have fallen to injury, but the majority have persevered. Follow our journey, both inside and outside the ring, as we make the long trek down the road to Restaurant Rumble. And how did I get involved in this? I don't really know. Everybody was all of a sudden talking about this boxing event. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if, you know, we saw Josh Bape and Steve DeCruz punch each other? The old rope-a-dope. I would box when I, was, when I was younger. I used to throw the fist around when I was younger. I have three brothers. Probably hit more guys than I have girls. I'm not a guy that has regularly gone to the gym. I ride one of those hipster fixie bikes. I play squash. And Filipino martial arts. Outdoors quite a lot. I love skateboarding. It's baseball and volleyball or patio drinking. Well, I have a daughter. Ten-year-old daughter. I work, I work a lot. You're talking about baristas, you're talking about barbers, you're talking about barbacks. You got top chef, top bartenders, people that have been around for a long time. I'm a third generation barber. I work in a kitchen, bartender. I won Top Chef Canada last year. I give a fucking great haircut. No fighting experience at all. No boxing experience. I've always wanted to learn how to box. I want to fight so bad. So I thought, stop whistling and do it. Okay, let's do it. I don't think that enough people have really talked about the impact this has had on the community of mostly Gastown, but everybody restaurant industry that's been involved. Five years ago, no one went to Gastown. There was, there was nothing here. There was a few restaurants. But now, we, we have so many restaurants with so many professionals uh, making amazing food. It is the entertainment district of Vancouver, I believe, right now. You walk down the street and you're in it. You're getting high fives from people. You know. A charity event, and it's an industry-based event that's not centered around alcohol consumption or like partying is like really pleasing to me. It's just like this camaraderie. It's a sense of community, it's a sense of belonging. One of the great parts of being in Gastown and, and also one of the most challenging is, in my opinion, pretty much all of the best bars are here in Gastown. It's actually a really close community. I'm the wine director and the assistant general manager. Here at Nicolet Antique Pizzeria, we were the first wood burning oven in Vancouver. It's 100% wood burning, no gas. The Poor House, we, we are a, a classic pre-prohibition bar. Back in that time, there was a very simple, concise, and well thought out way when it came to cocktails. Through the boxing, these were a number of people that I knew. You know, we waved to each other if we were going down the street. We all live and work in the area here. When I heard about the event and, you know, one of the boxing gyms closing and that kind of thing, it's like, this is a really good idea, something really good to get behind. I grew up in East Vancouver, and I know that this program helps a lot of kids from there. You know, I let, I let the stupid part of me get the best of me, and, and I ended up getting stabbed. And if I had been with my coach the whole time, training something good, that would be good for me. I got stabbed and I ended up in the hospital, close to dying, which is crazy. Dave's just been a huge figure for so many kids on, uh, on the east side. An amazing coach, man. He never gives up on people, and I'm here now. And because of him, I'm going to be fighting soon. I don't limit the success to the activities in the ring. It's, uh, I... I'm involved a lot in the home life. I know all my kids that I train parents very well. I know how their grades are. I know how their relationships with other kids are and their relationship with their families are. So it's a, a mentoring program where I mentor these kids uh, in life, not just boxing. Dave's probably the best coach I've ever had uh, out of any sport. Doesn't stand for any nonsense. It with a sense of humor. Get in there, Gaga! Okay. I want seven people with gloves on. Hold on. 
he's no bullshit. Let's go, Buttercup! I think it, maybe he's so hard on the outside because he's got such a little soft spot in the middle. Don't tell him I said it. I'm a boxing coach, the head coach for the Aprons for Gloves event. Third generation boxer. I don't want to talk about me. That's pretty much one of my rules, right? This, this shouldn't be about me. You know, it should be about what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I boxed, yeah, I did MMA, yeah, I wrestled, I did a lot of stuff. I got a lot of shit too, but, uh, you know. My thing is right now, I really want to focus on, right now, the people that are doing this to help out the club. You know, I, I, I have the utmost respect for them. This is about everyone, you know, a collective effort to do something right, do something proper. You know, that's what's important. Been helping out with the coaching for aprons for gloves. Tryouts were tough, man. I mean, I'm sure you heard people were puking, you know, people were getting like sending eight counts. I thought we were just gonna have interviews and, and talk a, a little bit about what was going on. We got an ambulance on standby, boys. Went to the change room, got changed in my like gym stuff, had a little panic attack. I had the guy like wrapping my hands and being like, this is a job, and me being like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, how hard could three minutes be? Knock the pint right out of him. Get pints last night. Oh, we're not joking around here. Give me what I want, Dave. Make it hard to oh! Full of booze, full of whatever. You know, a little high on themselves. You know, fancy haircuts, fucking beer bloat. They know it's true. Come on, up, water low, buddy. You know, I kind of blew my load on the on the heavy bag, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, you're doing the the sit-ups. I wanted to die. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, 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 by the time you're done sit-ups, you get in the ring and you're already wobbly and some guy's hitting you in the body. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Everyone was jeering at me and heckling me. Yeah, I'm not feeling very good right now. 30 seconds! Give it to me! Come on! It's the toughest part is a lot of people resist the things that are best for them. Oh, that's done the bit. Let's go! Take that! That's nothing! And Dave's yelling at me, he's yelling at me, he's yelling at me. He came out of the ring and <laughs> it's pretty shaky and had to go to the bathroom and throw up, but <laughs> it was it was the worst three minutes of my life. I want the initial approach to be one where they whether they're gonna do it or not. I'll tell you the honest truth, we're gonna fucking punish them for the first little while just to see who's gonna stick. After we weed the people out, I want to take the people that are left over that have the desire. We're going to take our time and teach them properly. I got three months, and the beautiful thing is, you know, almost everyone except for a few people has about the same amount of experience. You know, the only advantage people are going to have is the amount of work and desire they put into it. If you got a guy that's only coming for the three days a week uh, and he's not doing his road work, doing his running and doesn't want to do the extra things, then uh, he probably won't do as well as the person that commits to doing those extra little things, right? You want it or not? Show me what you've got! Attaboy! First week's going to be hell week, because I want to see who's got, the, who's got the guts. The last six weeks is going to be very intense, because then we're getting the fight ready, and traditionally six weeks is where you know how much you need to, uh, to uh, get someone in fighting shape.